everyone, it's Tessa and Stephanie from The Uncommon Creative. We are joined today by Doug of Twig and Olive. Doug will also be appearing at the conference, uh, The Uncommon Creative Collective, September 22nd to 24th, 2018 in Niagara-on-the-Lake. Yeah. Are you here today, Doug? <laughs> well, I'm, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm really looking forward to this conference. We are so excited to have you. I noticed you have something in your hand there. <laughs> it is my, I am going to Canada for the first time. So I am going ahead and I'm cheersing up everybody with my, my Canadian whiskey today because it's 10 o'clock in the morning and that's what you do in Wisconsin. Right, right. <laughs> Ontario too. That's all right. <laughs> all right, so we know that when you come and visit us, you're gonna be talking a little bit or demonstrating a little bit with uh, teens. What made you wanna tackle that category? Because I think a lot of people are really afraid to work with teenagers and all that attitude, so. <laughs> It's a really good question. Um, so when I was thinking about, okay, I'm coming to Canada for the first time. I'm really excited about it. What's what are people going to talk about? What are people going to be interested in? Um, I thought teens. I said that's that's a topic that repeatedly comes up in the workshop series that we teach. I think people create this mysticism layer about them that they're this weird, archaic, like super complicated, like nuanced thing, and they're really not. Like they're just they're bigger kids. They have their own challenges. Um, but I don't really treat teenagers that exotically different than I do my toddlers. No, I'm not playing peekaboo monkey games or things like that with them, but I use a level of humor with them that's more on their level. And if I think about a teenager, I have a teenage son, and I think about what works well for them is um, sarcasm. Sarcasm translates really well. So much about them and what they're doing that day. And I'm like, oh my God, like who would want to do pictures today? Like, I get it, like this is lame, like great, but suck it up for a few minutes and this is gonna be great and let's do this thing is kind of a primer that I will use for teens. Um, and their reaction to a sentence of that, of that nature, of that caliber is gonna tell me immediately after that how I'm gonna end up reacting. We, uh, we both have kids verging on the teen years mm -hmm. and there was a, you know, a distinct difference definitely in the way that they uh, sometimes speak and act, but but I hear what you're saying. They are big kids still. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot more so than probably people realize. Um, so is this something that you think that yeah. you kind of grasp more now that your own kids are getting a little bit older? Or have you always had an interest in working with teenagers? As I thought about this question in terms of like, um, like what it connects to me personally. And yeah, but I also think kind of in my own mind that I'm like, I have one teenager and my, and my teen is a really easy teen. My, my next kids will not be easy teens, but my one kid is a really easy teen. Like he would do anything, like he loves his family and he would be like, oh yeah, no, let's do it. Like he's totally about it, which I know is not every teenager. So in some respects, it's like him being a teenager hasn't helped me. Um, but at the same time, my background of just talking to people, and if you think about the progression of people as to where they are from a one-year-old to where they are as a five-year-old to where they are as a 10-year-old, there is a progression of their, of their, of just their ego and, and, and where they put themselves in the world and what you can play with them. And so teens are no more than the intermediary between that like 10 year old pre-adolescent and adulthood. And so they're still trying to structure it, but they still are closely connected to who they were as kids and the fact that they recognize their part as a family. And so I think for me, I think back to who I was as a teenager and I was a difficult, I was a very difficult teenager. I, my mother, if she was here, she probably would have just fallen over laughing, like just died laughing I was a difficult teenager and um, it was my own self-absorption really is what it was at that point and so I think about that and I think about my friends at that age and and just what it means to be a teen in this world um, and my point being you can be a photographer a family photographer that photographs teen and not have teenagers and still be successful at it if you think about yourself you think about uh, who you are or just where they could connect into that progression of towards adulthood um, they're not a big scary monster they're not a terrible thing um, uh, that's so much harder than kids right you just it's harder to be vulnerable around teenagers because they can like which is that's insulting that like that hurts whereas a one-year-old's not going to be like eh, you <laughs> uh, I mean maybe maybe that's happened to me once but like you know <laughs> When you were uh, talking about teenagers and the attitude they gave you, you said stuff and junk and things or something to that effect. And it kind of reminded me of your topic for your keynote, <laughs> which is 25 truths, 25 and truths and a little bullshit. What's that all about, Doug? <laughs> um, 
so this, so I, I will preface this, uh, the response to your question, Tess, um, not by, uh, in, I want to be really careful not to insult anybody. And I think our industry uh, right now, it's very dominated by women, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And I do think that men and women alike need to go to workshops and uh, e online workshop experiences and conferences. And I do think they need to be inspired. I do think there's a time and a place for inspiration and feeling better about yourself and what you need to do. I also think at the end of the day, <laughs> it sometimes gets on borderline bullshit levels where it's, I think we're bullshitting ourselves into thinking that everything is so hunky dory and amazing. And if I just, you know, <laughs> if I just have another pumpkin spice latte and Instagram about my life, like it's going to be so great um, that I can, I can do photography then. And I, I don't think that's what it's about. I think that when you go to a conference, the purpose to invest in that, to spend that money, to listen to teachers, hopefully teachers that you've, you've either heard of or you've never heard of, but you're like, wow, I want to learn from that person. We as photography educators, I think, have a responsibility to give tangible content. And I think too many educators out there work on this idea of like, I'll inspire people by being inspirational, but you know, at the, we need to give content as well. So my, my keynote is prefaced and centered around the idea of literally giving 25 high, like high volume, uh, really awesome, um, uh, things that I've learned, things that we at Twig and Olive have learned as being photographers. And, and they're related to portrait photography and wedding photography or just running a business. And, and they're not necessarily all this like in the same genre, but they're all interconnected to how it is that we, we, we failed, how we made mistakes and what we did about it to, in response to it. That we didn't just like, oh, I needed to get inspired to do this today, but that I was like, I dug down, I screwed up, I made a mistake, and this is what I did to be better. I learned that um, by, by not having effective communications and gaps in my communications, it cost me as a business owner and what I've done about it since. And I think that all 25 things are going to be very relatable to everybody that's going to be attending that keynote so that they can walk away from there feeling like they can be uh, ready to implement one or two or, you know, maybe 25 of those things immediately in their business. The bullshit part of it comes where I'm going to probably tear down some ideas as well uh, that, that touch on um, this, this overt need to, to be um, uh, pretty and beautiful and all that stuff. And again, um, not, that I'm, not that I'm knocking that, but like at the end of the day, we really do need to work hard. We really do need to think about our business and business strategies as successful entrepreneurs, uh, businessmen and businesswomen. Um, we need to, to sometimes have some realities and some tough truths to that as well. So that, that's really what it's going to, to, to elaborate on. Yeah, we're pretty excited. We tried to pick a balanced panel of um, speakers for that reason, because we do want to present people with the opportunity to learn business. I think it's one of the biggest faults in our industry that people go in and they have no actual understanding of how to run a profitable business and to be paid and, you know, even just to have those practices, yeah, to be paid, big one. But yeah. those practices in place that protect your business. So I think it's going to be an incredibly valuable, um, you know, keynote for everyone. I think one of the things that I really wanted to elaborate on is, um, and this is probably a big one, is I'm, I'm thinking about my topics now that I'm kind of listing out. Um, a lot of them are controversial in the sense that um, I think that there's been photographers and blogs and forums that have pontificated and used their, their platform to say, this is the thing that I do, therefore you must do that. And I think that's the biggest bullshit that we have in this industry right now. Um, I think that there's a lot of means to a lot of different ends. And I think there's a lot of ways that you can be successful in this industry. And, and I intend to, I, I, I intend to elaborate and, and prove that. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. I'm actually very excited <laughs> for that. We are. Good. Yay. <laughs> Doug, it's been amazing having you with us for this little mini interview, a little taste of uh, what you might get with Doug at the conference. We're very might. excited. Will. 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 <laughs> I would say plus plus, right? Like it's plus a, plus. Plus, plus, I'll even be prepared and, you know, I'll dress up and I'll probably have two whiskeys, so it'll be great. <laughs> Fantastic. We can't wait. But, yeah, we're very excited to be bringing you up first time in Canada. And uh, I think there's a lot of people here that are excited that you'll be coming up. So mm -hmm. I'm excited. Thanks for letting me come to your country finally. <laughs>
Join us September 22nd to the 24th, 2018 in beautiful Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario for the Uncommon Creative Collective, Canada's Family Photography Conference. Stop, stop, stop it, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> me, 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 artichokey, rutabaggy, rutabaggy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see it here? I wore my, I wore my Twig and Olive shirt today. Oh, look at you. Now, you know what? You've never let me into your country before, so I'm going to have to learn my screen. <laughs> <laughs> you could think this is my screenshot. Like, are there any other men coming? Like, is this just Doug and a bunch of, like, crazy women drinking in Canada? Is that, like, yes, really what this comes from? That's to you. I'll be serious. <laughs> <laughs> this is pre-drinking girls. Just imagine what the wine and whiskey tour is going to be like. <laughs>